Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, October 1 shooting victims are remembered during a special ceremony at the Healing Garden and big improvements are coming to Bruce Trent Park. Of course, the councilwoman who represents Ward 2 is Victoria Seaman and she joins me now. Councilwoman, welcome back. How are you? Great to be here. We've made it to the fall. Correct. We're ready for all the fall activities. And we have a lot. We're going to talk about that today. Of course, we're still dealing with COVID. Uh, that'll be part of the show today. And you can see we're socially distanced. We're still doing that, being safe. And, yes. And we're getting through this. I think we are. We are. We're taking it a step down. City's been very busy despite all of the things that have been going on. And I mean, we've maybe never because stopped, of the things that. And have we've been going, never stopped working. We have not. We've continued to work through it all and had to do things differently. You and I were talking about that before we went That's on the right. air different this year in a lot of ways, Very but different. we're still we're still delivering those services as That's best right. we can through all this. So, Councilwoman, you and I both live in Ward 2, so we know it pretty well. Uh, but for the folks out there that maybe don't know exactly where we're talking about, well, don't worry. We're going to show you on the map. Uh, Ward 2, of course, is that area with the two on it, appropriately enough. It is basically west of the Rainbow Curve, primarily. If you live in that area or work in that area, then you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. And, of course, if you're a resident out there, you have been represented by Victoria Seaman on the City Council now for a little over a year now. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's hard to believe. It's gone time by Time is passing it so has. fast. It's and we've gone through a lot in the short time that I've been you here. You really have. What a way to come into mm -hmm. the City Council. We had COVID shortly after you were in office, and it has, it's been a challenge. It's been yep, a difficult Yeah, but when time. you have a good team behind you, as yep. I always tell you, you do. then we can get through everything. Yeah, a good team at the city. You yes. have a good team around you and oh, your yes. office. We're going to meet one of those folks, a newcomer, later on in the program today. We'll introduce her to you. But in the meantime, uh, let's talk about some of the things going on in Ward 2. Um, uh, kind of somber to start off with, but very important. Uh, you posted this on Facebook. Tonight we remember those who perished on October 1. And of course, uh, you were out at the Healing Garden along with uh, Mayor Goodman, uh, Councilwoman Fiore, uh, and Councilwoman uh, Diaz uh, for the, the reading of the names. We do this every year at the, at the Healing Garden. Um, the names of those who died are and read. And I think this is so important for the families. And I have to say, the Healing Garden is a beautiful place to remember their loved ones. Yeah. It, it really is, and they've kept it up so beautifully. And I was there last year, and it, it's it's so different this it year. Is. You it's know, Councilman, so you're so right. It's changed mm -hmm. so much. The, the trees have matured. Other things, people have left different mementos That's there. Right. So it changes. If you haven't been there in a while, it, it's really a place of peace. And, of course, around October 1, it, of course, has extra special meaning. Uh, if you're not familiar with how we do it, uh, the mayor and uh, yours truly read the names, a bell tolls and then a candle is lit for uh, the 58th that we lost that night. And of course, we also mentioned the two who've recently passed as a result of their wounds. So, uh, but you always come out, you and your, your fellow council members support, uh, support us in the event that night. And it was, it was different this year. You and I were talking about that. We could only have about 70 people in the, mm -hmm. in the garden or so um, based on the governor's restrictions. So, but, it, but it's still so important that we're absolutely, there and absolutely. that we remember everyone who lost absolutely. their Absolutely, and all the family members that were they able were to there. attend. They, yes. they were able to attend and there was, there was a, a place for them, social distanced. And um, so uh, that will always be a, a, a thing that I think we'll do for many, many years in Las Vegas because that's something that seems like all of us knew somebody or had some connection to that concert. We knew people who passed who away, were, one of our or coworkers. Who were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or were there, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, who were wounded or who, who thank God, survived, yeah. but uh, maybe carry some other scars with them from having been there that night. Yes. So. so we remember them. And of course, uh, we also, uh, a very poignant, salient event in our history is 9-11, and you're always involved in, in the event there. Uh, this took place out at Police Memorial Park. This is really something, I know you're out there with a lot of these um, police officers who were actually in New York on September yes. 11th, 2001, some of these gentlemen that you're, that you're posing with. Yeah, and, and they uh, hold it every year yeah. at Police Memorial Park. It's um, very um, important for them, and, and I'm always honored to be there and be a part of it. Yeah, a lot of those folks have relocated to Las Vegas. They live yes. in your ward. They live uh, in the city of Las Vegas now, but they still 
don't forget oh, uh, no. their memories from back in New York. So and like you know, and it's an important memorial that we should sure continue is. every year. Same day, uh, this of course out. This was out in in our neck of the woods, but uh, downtown near uh, Fire Station Five, Rats Fire Station Five. We also remember firefighters that have fallen, and of course there are many New York firefighters who have retired to Las Vegas, and of course it's the same thing for them at Fire Station 5 and a memorial on that same day. So we will continue to do that and remember those, uh, as, as we always say, we will never forget. And then at Councilwoman, also we wanna talk about, also at Police Memorial Park, this was the, the following day uh, on September 12th, Constitution Day, this is an important date in U.S. history, obviously, and it's always remembered uh, by you and your team as well, right? Yeah, and I want to shout out to Brenda Flank, who has the Alliance for Liberty and Education, who every year, as long as I can remember back, celebrates Constitution Day. Um, we, we celebrate the 4th of July, but so many of us don't celebrate the Constitution yeah. Day, and it, it, it's a really important part of our history, so I'm grateful to her for continuing this um, this holiday, and I will always participate. Yeah, uh, the Constitution Day, of course, it was ratified in September, uh, and so that's why we Correct. We, we remember that date uh, all these years later. So it's held up uh, you know, sure all, has. all these years uh, in the United States, and uh, it really is kind of what binds uh, our, our society together is the Constitution itself. So yeah. a great event out there each year. And of course, that also took place at Police Memorial Park. It was busy the 11th for the remembrance for 9-11 and then on the 12th Constitution Day. And then Councilman, a lot of change here at City Hall, especially at the executive ranks. I guess in 2020, we'd expect nothing else, right? It's just been <laughs> that kind of year. But our city manager, Scott Adams, is retiring, and uh, we've got a new HR director. Let's talk a little bit about chief that. Chief of Public Safety, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michelle fire Freeman. Chief, our fire chief had, had has oh, moved yes. on to another job as well. I'm so. just grateful that I was here and I was able to at least spend time with them and work with them for the past year. Exactly. Because yeah. it's an um, incredible group here at the city the executives and so now we're going to have to welcome some new people i'm really excited about jorge and uh, brian scott and yeah new, we have a new city attorney too that's exactly. true that's true it's been a lot this but year but these are folks that we also work with some of them and uh, we know that they're going to step into those shoes yeah. and do a great job yeah this is jorge cervantes he's going to be our new city manager scott adams retires in November, on uh, November 14th will be his last day. So Jorge's first day officially will be November 15th. Although Jorge's worked with the city about 22 years. So he's yeah. no stranger around here. And of course, this is Vince Zamora on the left. That's Scott Adams. He's the retiring city manager. The gentleman to his right, that's Vince. And, and Vince is, he's yeah. gonna be great. So our new he's, HR director. I'm very excited about it. And as Councilwoman mentioned, uh, we now are in, on the lookout for a new chief of public safety, a new fire chief. Some acting people are in the roles, uh, but uh, nothing official. Of course, that's Chief Freeman, Michelle Freeman. She is just retired as our chief of the Department of Public S Safety. So yeah, it's like you said, Councilwoman. It, it's funny. Things like that always seem to come in bunches. I don't know why that is, but <laughs> we, we've had bunches this year. Yeah, so quite it, a big change. Exactly, big change. And, and you know, our city attorney, Brad Jurbic, had retired earlier this year. I think he started it. I, I, and that, <laughs> and that was, that's exactly And then it was kind it. of it was a ripple domi effect. A domino <laughs> effect from there, exactly right. So um, anyway, so good luck to all those folks. We'll keep you posted. We'll have a chance to probably meet uh, some of them on our KCLV programming here at Channel 2 if you haven't met them already uh, on television. And then Councilwoman, I love Bruce Trent Park. That's right in my neck of the woods there. You posted this on Facebook. You said, thank you to everyone who showed up to discuss the improvements at Bruce Trent Park. And I love this because basically you had kind of a town hall meeting, 2020 style, <laughs> everybody socially <laughs> distanced, to get feedback on park improvements, right? You wanna hear what uh, people would like to see. It's so important. And as we're doing improvements, you know, people are curious about what's happening. So we do put it out in social media. We do put it out on Nextdoor. But I wanted folks to come out and, and tell us how they felt yeah. about the park. What was important to them? Because we see the obvious. We yeah. hadn't changed the playground in decades. Those things are obvious. 
but what does the park mean to you mm -hmm. and what would you like to see improved? Exactly, what amenities uh, would be most important yes. for you to see out yeah. there? Well, Council, I mean, you, do, you always do a wonderful job of giving people that access, hearing them out, making sure that their, their voices are heard and that, that you've got a good sense of what is it they want before, before we move forward. Right. So it looks like you had a good crowd out there yeah. despite the fact you know, it was a little different. It was outdoors and, you know, we were social distanced and people oh, no, it was wearing masks and it all was, that. But, yeah, it was great. It was great. I guess we're all getting used to that at this point. We it's are getting, just, let's not get too used to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please end sometime we soon. We do, do need to still interact. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And so that that's very good. And Councilwoman, if people would still like to give you some input, still time to do that, right? Yes, absolutely. Anytime. I mean, I would love to hear output, e input, even though... Um, we're working on the park, you know, it could be something, a simple fix or something they'd mm -hmm. like to see done that can be done at any time. Yeah. We encourage the constituents of Ward 2 to contact us about anything yeah. Yeah. that we can improve. That's our job. Mm -hmm. Our job is to take care of the ward and the community. And so we always want to hear yeah. from everyone. Yeah, and, and you do. And before the end of this program, of course, we'll tell you how you can get touch with, uh, get in touch with Councilwoman Seaman if you would uh, like to make a comment. Maybe it's about the park or, or, or you have a question about something else. And then I love this, Councilwoman, prior to the meeting, you had a big cleanup out there. Oh, yeah. You know, we love the volunteers that get out there, roll their sleeves up, and help us do things like clean up parks and, and all of that. And that took place on the same morning. And uh, you had uh, a group of swimmers. Sam yeah, Pipers, yeah, yeah. and let's give a big shout out to them because they came out and they collected uh, huge bags of, of garbage. And we keep the parks very clean. We do. But a lot can happen overnight sure, sure, or sure. in a few days. You get days. a big wind and things, and yeah, it's a mess all yeah, of a sudden. And yeah, and they came out early, very early in the morning and cleaned up. But the Sam Pipers are just incredible group anyway. Um, I love... Um, going to their swim meets and hearing about uh, their scholarships. So they're just a great group anyway. And they swim out of the Veterans uh, Vet Memorial, Veterans Memorial yes. which is right up in Ward 2, right next to uh, Palvary High School there. That's kind of that complex. We have our uh, rec, rec center is there, the high school's there, all of that. Uh, is, Very disciplined mm -hmm. kids. I mean, I, I don't know if you knew that, but a lot of them get scholarships too. You told me that. Yes, yeah, yes. because they're such good swimmers, they end up landing. Good swimmers yeah, yeah. and very disciplined in their studies. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Good great, students, yeah. great athletes, mm -hmm. yeah, and great representatives of Las Vegas. Right. So Great coach, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, Jake. Keep it up. That's, that's, that's really good. Well, congratulations to all the students and thank you for coming out. Again, Councilwoman, we love that elbow grease. Like you say, we do a really good job of maintaining our parks, but when you get, you know, 100 people show up, uh, you, you can get to things that you normally wouldn't be able to get to except Within a couple road. hours. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's wonderful. So we thank everybody for that. And if you're a Boy Scout troop or a Girl Scout troop or somebody looking for merit badges or, or, or intern projects, hours. Yeah, or intern hours, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be happy to, to help you out with a project oh, or yeah. two. <laughs> so we'll we always some, have work. We'll find something for you to do exactly <laughs> right. And then, uh, Councilwoman, I, I love this too. You posted this on Facebook. You said, uh, so grateful for those volunteers who came out to support the Ward 2 movie in the park. She got volunteers cleaning up the park. She got volunteers helping uh, with this event. Tell everybody what they did here. These are the police volunteers, Metro volunteers, and they come out every year and they give candy. To, they, they're part of the trunk or treat. Uh, and we just had an incredible time. We had a great turnout. Um, the movie, everybody seemed to love the movie. And this is, this is so important during this time because people can't go to the movie theaters. Yeah, that's right. So to have movie in the park and we were social distance, um, Chris, I have to say, Chrissy, Christy did a great job. Yeah. She came out, you know, the one who does the events for the city and made sure that everybody was social distance. And it was just a beautiful event. And we were lucky, too, because uh, just prior to that, the governor upped the amount of people who That's could correct. attend from 50 to 250. Yeah. So, again, everybody was pretty spread out, but we could have more people come, so which is kind of nice. Yes. Well, and and nice. I think we did have a big turnout because folks were just dying to get out yeah. Yeah. and see a movie. Yeah. And it was great. Everybody had a good time. We had so many people that came up to us and 
and really thanked us and they appreciated yeah. that we had done that. And I'm, I'm so happy that we're kind of back to normal. Yeah. So it's we're making do people. We're figuring it out. You know, it's it's different, but you know, that's part of 2020 and COVID this year, you know, we're just sure. getting through it. But great event out there. And uh, Councilwoman, I think all the council offices, yours included, trying to be as normal as we can or have some semblance of normalcy through uh, you know, a year that's been anything but. I think we've all done yeah. a great job. Our staff, our team, the city. Um, we've done a great job of trying to s show the folks that we're still out in the community. Yeah. We're still here to do whatever we can. Yeah. And so I'm really proud of the city and my team for doing a great job. Yeah, good. it was fun, good stuff. And then I want to remind everybody, I love this segment, Small Business Saturday. It used to be Small Business Sunday. It's now Saturday, Small Business Saturday. Small business is out there. You feature them uh, on social media. And I love this because I learn something every single time by tuning in. It's like, I didn't know that business is right in my and neighborhood. And I bet you're utilizing some of those I, businesses, right? I do. Right? Cleaners, <laughs> dry cleaners, exactly, exactly right. You know, um, but Councilman, tell everybody out there, if you have a small business and you'd like to be featured, you have to be in Ward 2. You have to be then, in Ward 2. Yeah. And, and it can be any business. We have done a myriad of different businesses. Could be restaurant, financial, um, any type of business in Ward 2. You want us to feature you, we will come out. You, you, All you have to do is call our office or email us and we'll set up an appointment and I'll come out. It's like a two minute segment. It's all over social media. We have you on YouTube, Facebook, um, Instagram. And we've had some feedback from our businesses that they've uh, had a lot of new customers that people that, like you said, yeah. you didn't know about I them and know. they're in the war. Exactly. And so we encourage people to call us because we do want to promote small business. We, we did this before COVID. You did. But yep. even after COVID, it's so much more important to remind people that these businesses are out there and they're ready to service, yeah. do, do whatever. Um, they're open. Yeah. They're open for business. And so that's, we, as I was telling you earlier, now we're featuring some of the uh, people in our farmer's market. Yeah. Because um, they're small businesses too. Absolutely. So it doesn't matter how small or how big, give us a call. Yeah, it's a, it's a wonderful segment. You're gonna learn something. I, like I say, I, I, I live in Ward 2 as well. And I learned something every time because I just didn't know these businesses were sometimes around the corner from where I live, but didn't right. didn't know they operate or didn't That's really right. know what they were all about. So, right. so again, if you would like to be featured, this is how to do it. You want to contact the councilwoman's office, 702-229-2420 or ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov is the email address. And of course, we'll have all that information for you before the end of the program as well. So I love that segment. So keep Keep doing the I will. I will. <laughs> Sounds good. It's important to me. Well, Councilwoman, we need to take a short break, but when we come back, you'll meet the newest member of the Ward 2 team. That's next, so please stay with us. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up.
Welcome back, everyone. The Ward 2 team has gained a new member to their ranks. Joining us today is Christina Tahaje. Christina, thanks for joining us and welcome to the city. Welcome to the Ward 2 office. Councilwoman always has great people around her, so I know that uh, you're very happy to introduce her to your, your constituents I out there. I am so happy. Thank you. Um, she's very constituent orientated and very friendly and you know, just a great addition to our team. Yeah, that's great. Well, Christina, uh, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, so that, uh, I, we always love to do this because when people want to contact the office, we just put a name with a face. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I saw her on TV. She seems really nice. <laughs> you know, I'm not afraid <laughs> to call her at City Hall. No, don't be afraid to call me at all for, for, for any issues that they may have out there, our constituents, but thank you for welcoming me here. Oh, very good. It's a, I'm very excited. Super. Hey, Christina, tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from Las Vegas? Actually, no. I come from Los Angeles, um, specifically Northridge, and I've uh, been living there for many, many years. And um, uh, originally, though, I'm from the island of Tahiti. So, um, from the islands to the desert. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We've all uh, traveled here generally. I mean, uh, so the sure. newer generation, are, they're born and raised, but for many but of us, you she know, came we, to we the migrate. Desert. Yeah, we exactly. want to go to Tahiti. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Councilwoman and I were saying, Tahiti, we'd love to go like right now. <laughs> so, maybe you can tell us some good.